talk, we're talking Oreos. Give us. Oh, <laughs> well, those are so good. I had I had a couple of them. I I know you guys do that uh, at tapings, so I figured I'd ask. Yes, Ross is constantly dangling chocolate in front of us to get us to do things. Oh. Havoc, you're holding out on so us. good. <laughs> I didn't know what they were. I, I honestly thought it was like a marketing thing and they weren't real. And then I saw them at the supermarket. I was like, all right, now I have to try them. Did you have you tried them yet, Rosemary? No. Ross and is a popper. They got Pop Rocks candy in them. Yeah. And it's amazing. You what? wouldn't it, think so, but it's so good. It's very subtle. Yes. It's not like, you know, you, you throw the whole pack in your mouth. It's very subtle, but it's like right. a nice, it's like a nice compliment. It is. <laughs> so, I'm bringing you some. So don't drink cola at the same time is what you're saying. <laughs> right. Yes. <No. laughs> yes. And let, I what mean, happens? Your stomach explodes? What was the urban legend? <laughs> that The urban legend was that your stomach would explode. Yes. <laughs> good move. I was or, always too scared to try it. Or it's a good science experiment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let someone else try it. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you both for joining me today. Now that we kind of talked about snacks a little bit i'll talk about what you guys are doing on tv uh what brings you back like i know it's maybe an odd way to frame the question but we yeah. saw courtney and jessica on tv for a while and this seems a little more like a sudden return so well i mean what, it what made, made you come back like uh i think i think for i think for havoc you know and i've talked about this countless times since since our return um is you know a little over a year ago havoc fell so soon to masha um and it was you could hear the wind be sucked out of the room nobody could believe it i myself couldn't believe it i we were shattered yes like it, it was it was very i don't know it was Something that made me feel as though I needed to go away and figure out who I was again. And Masha, you know, beating me so quickly, that's what happened. So it's, and, and Rosemary and I have been apart long enough. And then she finally came to find me and the timing was just right. It was, of course, a big surprise for everyone. Um, but I don't think we left many people disappointed and, you know, it was, it was only fitting. The time was then the time yeah. is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, it's understandable for people to only be able to see one side of the situation and to think it might be sudden to us. It wasn't sudden to us. It was calculated and to quote the great scholar, Dean Roddenberry revenge is a dish best served cold. Oh yes. <laughs> and once we're, we're training, we're re refining ourselves in the undead realm. And what are they looking at? Courtney and Jessica, these two bumbling fools who look like absolutely no threat whatsoever. <sighs> now with somebody who, put havoc out of commission somebody who made us feel weak who made us feel like we needed to go off and get better and now she holds one half of the tag team championship something which dk has coveted and owned multiple times and she how now has it this is the absolute perfect time to return <laughs> this was calculated this was yes. meant to be so that they didn't see us coming yes no nope. yeah like Per perfectly put uh i was gonna say unless i'm mistaken there was no tension there was no tease it was surprise we're back like it, it's been well received so it was a surprise for courtney and jessica too don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't tell them anything <laughs> uh, I i'd ask how they took the news but i'm probably betting they were not available we for ask. comment they weren't available for comment <laughs> there was no choice in the matter so they knew what they did when they signed the contracts. <laughs> so when did you two find out about the knockouts tag team title match? Because it, it was never announced, like you were plotting behind the scenes. So when when did this plan sort of come to fruition? <gasps> you want us to reveal all of our spies, all of our network of information, darling. <laughs> you can tell. How's the sausage made? <laughs> Nasty. I mean, I think you don't want to know if you ever want to eat one again. 
<laughs> I just I think it it only made sense that Hard to Kill was the rebrand. TNA was back, and so shall we. Like, mm-hmm. of course, this is it was a no brainer, and it was time. Yes, it, if you're going back to TNA, two of the very few that still remain in the company that were there when it was TNA. One yes. else seems to be the perfect place to rebirth ourselves as well as the company. You guys weren't exactly away that long. It was, you know, it wasn't like you took years off and. It went... seemed like years without having. <laughs> maybe, maybe that like longing for each other felt like an eternity. But mm-hmm. television wise, uh, you weren't away that long. But obviously, the company's gone under a huge rebranding. TNA, the names back. There's some new knockouts on the roster. Mm. Uh, Wanted to ask you about a few of them who've showed up, uh, specifically yeah. Zaya Brookside recently announced she signed there. Ash by Elegance had a, a big debut uh, on TV at Hard to Kill, the pay-per-view itself. Uh, any thoughts on working with them or against them? Thought of new shiny toys for Decay to play with and potentially break. It just sounds so fun. Mm-hmm. And those two, they're definitely they will only add to our division, but you know, it's, I feel like our women's division right now as a whole is very impressive. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice when we get, you know, new humans to play with in the division. Rosemary, do you have anything to add to that? (laughs) Well, in the particular, uh, the two that you mentioned was Zaya. We faced her so several years ago now uh, in England before she was signed uh, to NXT UK and it's it's exciting for us to know that uh, that the the amount of development that she's gone through to to know that that, that she is so much more of oh, the yeah. competitor and the performer that that now than she was when we faced her the first time that's very exciting because she was already good <laughs> She's and, very good. Yes, that's something we want to test ourselves against to see exactly where she's at and how much stronger we've gotten. Ooh. And um, with Ash, Ash is intriguing, isn't she? We're not <laughs> entirely sure what she's all about, but she caught our attention off the get-go. Yes. And that's because of she's hiding something. Oh, she's I hiding agree. something. She's not showing her full hand right off right off of the starting line and that is intriguing that's not something you see very often everyone comes in and goes this is who we are and we want this and we're a very strong human and we want your (laughs) belt (laughs) she's not showing everything she's being mysterious she's being elusive and we want Uh, to know more (laughs) i i think you might be onto something a pro wrestler hiding their true intentions Mm -hmm. do more uh, i i want to i want to hear that that promo in that voice more. I think, <laughs> I think you have like another, another aspect. That's our human voice. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the big return at TNA hard to kill. Uh, but that, that splacky, splacky, uh, spooky black and white promo that you did the pre-tape. Something just really hooked me with that. Like, I don't know if it was, the environment i don't know if it was the dialogue but all of it came together where like can you tell me i know you know we don't want to find out how everything's done but uh just a little bit about like maybe how you found the location and what uh the, the concept for that was cuz i just really thought that was a really unique look for you know based on what you what all of the other stuff you see on wrestling like that was really stood out on its own um We found the location, actually, um, going on a little excursion, wandering around uh, different buildings, different rooms, different parts of everywhere has different energy. We were looking for the right energy, the right place to deliver this incredibly important message that we needed to send out to the Hivelings and also to the enemies of the Shadow. And it was us, and we believe we were with Savannah (laughs) and... Oh... Someone else was with us at the time. But we happened upon this location. It was almost like it called to us. We had walked right past it. And then something made us turn around. And it was there. This beautiful existentialist setting. And we've always been such a fan of expressionism in uh, in filmmaking. Um, Big fan of the way you can twist reality and make it look 
like it's not real when it is real and it's right there and to play with the senses and to make you feel off balance almost did uh we we walked into that room and we felt like we were maybe moving and that kind of energy was just undeniable <laughs> and that was the place that was the room there was no other place to deliver I wasn't with you when you found it either but when you approached me and said oh <laughs> you have to see this. It was, it was perfect. Like yes. it was like, it's, it, just stepping into the room. It was like, this is exactly the setting we need to deliver this very important message. And it was only one more little piece to the puzzle to make sure that every human watched, mm -hmm. listened and did not look away. Mm -hmm. it, it was like walking through another realm and, and yeah. uh and everyone else we showed uh do want to give credit to the to where credit is due robert peak uh was the uh, was the cinematographer for that and absolutely saw our vision as well walked in there and knew exactly how to capture that energy to deliver that message and and uh it, oh, oh, so we want to go back there <laughs> yes <laughs> oh wait we are going back. Oh, there, we? we are. <laughs> the rebellion. Amazing. Back the very, very I love nice. it. <laughs> that tied in well. <laughs> very nice. So I I want to talk. I want to kind of look towards the future, keep it current. But mm -hmm. I have to look at the past because, you know, you kind of said uh, you gave Courtney and Jessica the boot on ceremonious exit. But are 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 there anything that uh you respectively learned from them to to sort of add another layer to rosemary and havoc that you want to keep hmm. we did, did learn they that if you did look they have like any a good qualities <laughs> <laughs> we did, we learned that if you look like a bumbling fool the people won't uh won't see you coming that that's yeah. definitely one thing we learned. that is and uh those bumbling fools they definitely i feel like they were a little bit of a surprise i will have to say with their success i found this what is this from last year oh we forgot to tell you <laughs> knockouts tag team of the year 2022 the death dolls uh rosemary love it jessica and taya valkyrie so they weren't completely you know useless <laughs> i guess you know we could add this to the accolades but i'm like what uh how <laughs> who's people oh Havoc, Jessica was very popular, but she also was very drunk a lot of the times. And we think people <laughs> like that a lot. <laughs> Too much pink. Where? A lot Why? of pink. Oh, my God. <laughs> you would get along very well with one of my daughters. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that I, I really appreciate about your presentation, uh, the theme song really sets the tone. It's been a staple of the team for a few years but uh i know havoc you're a huge afi fan so yeah. <laughs> is is Thanks. there uh no strings attached any any song your choice that you'd maybe want to have as decay's theme well i it's really hard to answer that because that theme is just so perfect with what we represent it's in the way that we move. It's in the, in our interactions, the energy. Um, I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of the AFI song. I hope you suffer because mm -hmm. that brings a message that I love to deliver as well. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I guess if I had to pick anything barring, you know, cause like, I guess I'll just say the, de the decay theme is perfect for us, but if there was a song, that would be the one. Mm -hmm. it, it, I know it's going to be hard to pick. There, There's a song you already have. It's the second theme. People remember the note. You used the nobodies for a while. I didn't think yeah. that I didn't think that anything would sort of rep replicate that mm -hmm. and left behind did. It, it really stood stood on its own. But the other thing I think you have to remember is AFI has so many different eras too oh yes they so, do <laughs> yeah uh, they're I, it was funny like a lot of my friends like to say uh you know because the the lead the lead of afi his name is davy havoc 
<laughs> so I was like, let me borrow that. Um, it, it's just an energy. I would go as far as to say at times he was a muse. Um, but it's, it's so funny because people, when they bring it up to me, there's one person who said my favorite era of Davey Havoc was his suicide girl era. And I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's so funny, but you're, it's true. They've gone through many eras and they, but they're still staying relevant and changing, you know, as they need to. So they should do an era store too. <laughs> What's that? They should do an era store too. Right. Move over, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Get out of golf kids in. Uh, yeah. Hey, they're they're going out this summer. Uh maybe they have time to put something together. Oh yeah. But we know. do want to add on to that too, because um with with a band with their with music, uh their 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 art and their 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 sound is always evolving and they do have different eras and you go through different looks and different decay we've gone through different looks different incarnations if you look back over the years we've never looked the same year by year mm -hmm. half the time even every six months we'll change up what we look like but that common thread that common uniting tone that that scream that opens it with the with the static hand going out and then the, the the left behind song which was written specifically for us a lot of people do miss the nobodies but that wasn't written for us that was this is something we felt fit us mm -hmm. left behind was written for us and it's now this common uniting thread throughout all of the existence of decay that no matter how we look, no matter who's involved in the group, no matter what we're wearing or what style we're performing in, this is DK. And we like that. It's kind yes. Of <laughs> it, it works. I just, I figured I, I, I had to find some way to work in my AFI plug. Oh, cool. I, I love I'm it. A, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the band, but, you know, I'm also a fan of the cheap plug, too. So. Yeah. We yes. are fiercely, <laughs> admittedly, fiercely um, defensive of Left Behind. We love it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I have time for one more question. I want to talk about TNA, No Surrender, and then Bayou Blast coming up as we're recording. It's next weekend in New Orleans. Uh what should fans look forward to as far as the new era of TNA or what Decay has going on? Something that's exciting about going to New Orleans and we were talking about that chapel in Las Vegas is New Orleans has so many spots like that. <laughs> yes. Such wonderful energy flowing through it. And wherever we're drawn to, we want to find places to deliver these messages, deliver, deliver our words in the shadows, words to the people. And that kind of energy there is always exciting. And New Orleans is one of our favorite places to perform because it it looks so good on us. <laughs> I feel like TNA, we have a ton of momentum going into this too. You know, uh, the Hard to Kill was so successful for the company and for Decay, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with the momentum that the company has, I feel like we are making it very difficult for fans to keep looking away. They want to watch. And I feel like that's that's something that I would really like to drive home. And I feel like we would like to drive home is, is keep watching because we are doing something different and something. And I feel what we're doing is important. Not that anything else isn't important, but I love to focus on what we're doing and what the company is doing as a whole. And I think that we will just only continue to surprise and impress. Yes. Trust us, Hivelings. We've never lied to you. We've got a very good feeling about this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> be proud of your work. There shouldn't be a disclaimer on that. You shouldn't have to say, oh, I like my stuff, but there's a, no, like just too, too, too many. Exactly. More. Too many explanations I just like to here. end up and say it with your chest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Anything else you uh, want to plug or promote before we get out of here? Mm -hmm. Jessica plays a lot of games on Twitch. I do. <laughs> um, so I I stream. That's where on you let Twitch. her out. Yes, <laughs> I stream stream on Twitch daily. Uh, many different video games. Decay also has a new T shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, so for any of the hive links who want to go grab a new shirt from the old TNA shop, make sure you do that. <laughs> 
we had a lot of compliments on that. People asking for for wrestling shirts that don't look like wrestling shirts. Well, this looks like a metal shirt. Yes. <laughs> if you're wondering, nice. the designer X Malovita X on Twitter is absolutely fabulous at that style. <laughs> Very talented. Very nice. I will have to go check out their work. Uh, I, I'm a fan of of a, of a rock shirt that yes. is actually a wrestling shirt too. So. Go check that out. Uh, no Surrender next weekend. Bayou Blast is next weekend. Thanks for the time and continued success and, and enjoy you. the cookies. Thank you. Very <laughs> much, <Yes. Hilda. laughs>